And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Should be Josh. I'm late again, Thompson, because <laughs> we're late time. again because of you. Wow. I can't take it anymore. It's too much. Too much. Look at you. You're going to sneeze. Oh, man. What the hell is going on with you, mister? You got to get it together. Oh, the weather in Texas is out of control, John. <laughs> it's been was crazy it? here, man. Dude, it was raining like a sub bitch Rain. yesterday. Rain? God, That's like Rain, amateur man. stuff, man. We had... We had hail the size of silver dollars the other day. I, I kid you not. I got lucky enough that I, I didn't even check to see if my Jeep would fit in the garage because it has the rack on top. And luckily, it just missed it by like two inches because I had to pull that thing in quick. Put it this way. We got like those amber alerts, but it was a weather alert. It was that loud on your phone. Well, I guess apparently it gives you like 30, it gives you 30 minutes to an hour to like get to safety. So... Yeah, I was able to. Luckily, my my uh, Jeep fits in the garage. We figured that out real quick <laughs> because as soon as I was backing it in, the front end started getting hit with hail. It was nasty. It broke. I had still had like, um, you know how you kind of put like lights up around the back patio, you know, like yeah. uh, I had those. Fifteen bulbs. Not anymore. Fifteen bulbs broken. <laughs> Fifteen light bulbs broken. Had to take them all down. I was like, yeah, well, time to get rid of them. Oh man, horrible. Uh, the weather's been crazy here. It's been raining. It's been, it was just 80 degrees last Tuesday. Was, Welcome to spring, baby. Man, it was 80 last Tuesday. And then it's been like in the forties, this, those last couple of days and rainy and eh. all right. Enough complaining, enough whining, enough crying. Enough, but let's talk about something positive. Let's talk about something positive. positive. Let's talk about let's... Mark the hammer Coleman. God damn it. Mean, what a man. You know what? I, I feel so bad for him. You know, God bless him. He saved his parents, uh, got him out of their house, which was on fire. They say it was the started in the kitchen or something like that. But yeah, and, uh, he was able to get his parents, carried them both out, went back for his dog. That is not a smart thing to do. And I totally appreciate the fact that he did it. Uh, dogs normally will go and hide. They'll usually try to hide under a bed or something like that. Um, he barely, he barely made it, you know, out of that. They went and got him, and and I don't know. Have you ever been in a fire? Yeah, I did some stuff with the San Jose fire fire department. Yeah. So they geared me all up, put me in like one of those big. Um, yeah, you were geared up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I've never been like in a real fire. No, I've been dude, in it was a real fire. I've been in I real fires. Can't. I will tell you right now, man. When you, when it feels like your skin is on fire. It is a nasty, scary feeling, and it's you. You cannot breathe. The smoke is so goddamn thick, and heavy, and hot. You know, people have no idea. You think you just think you know how you know when like you open a barbecue mm -hmm. and it goes woof with that. It's like that and does not go away. It is crazy, and uh, you know, God bless Mark. He made it. You know, he was able to, uh, like I said, get his parents out. He ended up going to the hospital. Uh, they in, in, intubated him, mm -hmm. so that's not good, but he made it out of that. He went home, and then his daughters brought him back because he's got pneumonia. He's back in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, God bless you, brother. You are one of the toughest son of a bitches out there, man. Uh, just You are something special, man. Everybody out there, there is a uh, GoFundMe for Mark. Mm -hmm. Uh, I put money into it. I hope you guys put money into it. Um, it will help him with this situation because no one's prepared for the cost of what this kind of thing will do. So his daughter's put up a GoFundMe. So if you got, you know, $5, $10, $1, I don't care. Mm -hmm. See if you can maybe send that to someone that's in need right now because Mark's kind of in need. His story is remarkable. Girl. I mean, I... Was I was we, we hung out quite a bit during the Phil Baroni era when Phil was living with me in San Jose, yeah. and uh, you know Mark was always there to help corner him. Uh, we were in the UK together. Uh, we were in Japan together. We've been all around uh, traveling, Hawaii, you know, everywhere. This guy is he is as energized as anybody I've ever met in my life. 
He's got so much energy. He's always he's crazy. He's crazy. Yeah, but he's fun. He's absolutely crazy. He's, I love him. <laughs> he it's so funny. I used to, you know, because uh, I wrestled a little, you know, in, in high school and some in college. I always told him, I was like, man, I'll take you down. He's like, you're oh, dude, never, never going to no, take me down. Dude, he, he'll, he'll look at you go, no one takes no, me down. No, he, <laughs> he was. Oh, man. I mean, we would be at the we'd be at the restaurant in line. He would just snatch a single leg or he'd grab the head or he would just do something, right? We'd be at a nightclub in the bar, you know, get ready to get a beer. And he would snatch a single leg and rough around. You know, he just was someone that always had the energy. And was fun to be around, man. Oh, loved being around him. Great guy, big heart. Um, man, it just shows. I mean, like I said, his story of his uh, sobriety. Also, he's been sober for yep. for quite a while now. Um, Two years now, changing his life around. Uh, then something like this. I mean, being a true hero. I mean, I, I had posted on on social media on Twitter on X, and I basically said, "I'm like, he's exactly who we thought he was." He's a fucking like, animal. I, I saw that. The, the, the old Dennis Green line. Yeah. They are who we thought they yeah. were, right? It's, yep, he, he is. He's exactly who I thought he was. He's a fucking animal. Like, he's a hero. He isn't that? He's a savage. Yeah. I mean, everything about him is what you see is what you get. Yeah, there's only there's only one speed and yeah. only one one direction. Mm -hmm. It has no reverse. No. No, no, no. Yeah. But, man, what a, what a hero, man. Save your parents like that. And, unfortunately, he didn't save his dog. Wasn't able to find his dog. But uh, his dog was found under the bed. Yeah. And um, it's sad, but you know, hey, ah, that's horrible. But uh, but hey, hopefully he's uh, get, hopefully he feels better, gets out of the hospital. After get out, long. get got to get it, you know, through the pneumonia. Mm -hmm. That's not good. It's a bad thing. So, but once he can get through that, you know, hopefully he can get home, get to his family, and his daughters are taking care of him. So that's a good thing. He's always got them. <laughs> One of the I got to tell this story. We were in Hawaii with 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 mark and and phil baroni was uh was fighting out there <laughs> and uh you know we were all joking around having a couple of drinks and everyone having a great time and i was you know off you know hanging out with trevor and with the uh, baroni and then i and all of a sudden i felt this tap on the shoulder and uh and it's bj penn and bj goes hey bro he's like he's like go you might want to go get mark because Marky knew that Mark was with us. <laughs> and I looked over and Mark's got his t-shirt off in the middle of the dance floor. He's just swinging it around. But I don't know if you guys have been around. He sweats profusely. Oh, yes. He is just drenched from head to toe. So I look across the nightclub and I see him and I'm like, oh, man. But as I see him swinging his shirt around, I see like the sweat or wetness of it going around <laughs> and everybody's like ew the, the whole dance floor starts to clear and all the girls are just ew it was but it was hilarious and he's just out there he's got his shirt he's like doing the whole thing where you're like behind your back like a towel and like around oh, yeah. it's he's i'm just like oh he's larger in life man but that was one of the funniest stories i look back and because bj Taz was like hey man you might want to go get mark <laughs> did you ever roll with him i did I did. Okay. I've, I've, I've rolled with him. He is one of the strongest fucking Hands human down. beings as far as le just leverage strength. Mm -hmm. You go, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. He, he was so stubborn yeah. about what, you know, Mark, like I said, he's only got one speed, right? And he was, you know, we're trying, trying to do something with him and Kevin Randleman to, to go on over, try, you know, basically a triangle choke. And, and here's ways to get out, right? And freaking Mark, you know, it's like, it's, you know, he'll say, put Kevin in it, right? Uh, no, squeeze, you know? Yeah. Mark, he's got to learn the technique. Like, no, no, no. Come here, Kevin. Grabs him. <laughs> <laughs> he locks him up. He starts pulling on his head. And I go, Mark, he's going to go out. And he goes, got to learn, learn the right way, man. And he's just, that is just who he that's is. exactly what his voice sounds like. He is just got to learn the right way. Got to go 100%. Right. And I was like, he was just, <sighs> but he was fun to be around, man. He's he was a great just, guy. he was, he is a great man. So, Mark, please get well soon. Mm -hmm. We love you. And uh, God bless you for being the brave man that you are, man, because that is not easy going into fires and getting your parents out is a beautiful thing. And, <clears throat> I'm sorry about the dog and everything, but we all love you. Mm -hmm. Get well soon, brother. 
Uh, John, we uh, to top that off though, we've got uh, we we we'll go over what? What is this? Thirty eight, eighty three. What, what number what? is this? Thirty eight. What are you? UFC. I don't even know what the numbers are. Eighty eight. Well, it always confuses yeah. me. It says two thirty nine. Yeah, it's in Vegas. Because it's, UFC, UFC because it's a fight night, but now uh, once the apex started, they yeah. kind of started numbering them different. So, how, how much longer do you think we're going to be at this apex thing? Forever. Forever. It's, it's too simple. Come on, Josh. Think about it. Think about how much money it costs yeah. to go anywhere as a promotion and stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't care what promotion is. UFC, it's going to be even more because they bring more people. But all the people you're bringing, all the different things, where at the apex, none of your you know people in your promotion are going anywhere. They're all there. Yeah, this is where they work. Everything is set up. The only thing you're bringing in is the fighters in their corners, referees, judges. Yeah, that's it. Simple. Yeah, and a lot of the fighters actually live in Vegas now. Oh yeah. You know, they're yep. training at Extreme Tours, they're training at uh, Syndicate. Syndicate, they're training at the all these. PI all yeah, the time. Yeah, I mean, they're all around. Yeah. yeah so. Yep, makes sense. I mean, I, I get it. I just wasn't sure if we would snap out of this. I mean, I always felt like, for me, I feel like with the PFL and the same thing with Bellator, I always felt that it was a wasted opportunity that we didn't go to more locations. Absolutely. Because no, right now, about. there's fans. Like, when we went to Seattle um, for that show, it was a small venue, about 1,500 seats. You know, um, and it sold out quick. Yeah, at the casino. It was, yeah, yeah, it was a casino that was in uh, Tacoma, which is south of Seattle. But um, great little spot. Looked good on camera. Fans were thirsty for MMA. They're like, yeah, UFC never comes here. I'm like, and you know, and like, they're never going to go, like, they they go one every five years or seven years or whatever it is. We got to think, right? Up until the last couple of times that they went to uh, Miami, they hadn't been there since UFC 44, 42. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, UFC 42. Dude, you were in 44. I know, 42. <laughs> you were at 42. I was at 42, yeah. <laughs> I was fighting in the streets. Um, oh, man. But um, but you know what I mean? Like, it just, I don't know, John. It's not, It's. I feel like fans are out there going, we want more MMA. And the ones that just are getting left behind, I think it's a missed opportunity that Bellator did. It's a missed opportunity. I think if the PFL starts... Don't, There's no don't go to the same spots. No doubt about it. It's the one thing that when you there's so many places. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to th- take a look at, you know, the UFC does a good job of kinda except for California mm-hmm. and except for Las Vegas, they kind of go to one place a year. They'll go to New York once a year. Usually it's in November. They'll go to, you know, a a different location, but they'll they'll go to Texas. They'll go to, you know, Dallas, or they'll hit San Antonio or Houston, you know, but for the most part, you know, they, they stick with going to one location once a year and then they'll, you know, revisit it because it makes it special Mm -hmm. and it makes it to where fans want to buy tickets. It's a smart move. And the one thing they did when, you know, because they used to go to smaller locations all the time with fight nights. And it was, you know, they would be in Kentucky or they would be in Nebraska or somewhere like that. They don't go to those places anymore. You know, and it's, this is exactly, you know, what the Apex has taken the place of because it's, it's built in for them. It's cheap for them. They can put on the show, you know, they have so many shows that they have to deliver to ESPN. It makes sense for them. I don't, you know, in any way say, oh, they're, they're stupid because it's for them, it makes sense. But what's stupid is other promotions. And when we were with Bellator, I'll say that one, it was, Hey, you need to go to these locations, go to places like, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, go to places like Omaha, Nebraska, go to places like, you know, either Nashville, which UFC does go to Nashville, you know, but. Go to go to Knoxville. Go to Chattanooga. Go to there's all these places where people want mm-hmm. MMA. They want to go to those shows, and you can make good money putting butts in the seats. But no, everyone wants to go. I want to go to Vegas, mm-hmm. or I want to go to you know L.A. And it's like no, but you know that's yeah. It's it's really awkward. Like um, not awkward. It's just weird that 
promotions try to go to Vegas. <clears throat> I know. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's so crazy, you know, and this, ah, I'm not going to even get into it, but the stories I can tell it, it's no, like, it's just... if you, if you think that, you know, you're going to have an easy time going to Vegas when you don't have UFC mm -hmm. attached to you, you're a fool. Yeah. You're a fool. I mean, they're, they're just not going to make it easy. You know, they're, no. they're going to find ways to make it difficult. Um, and it's not just, it's not just them. I, mean, I have other, I know other people that make it difficult for your, for promotions to go to some cities as well. I mean, I've got plenty of, absolutely. you know, and so like they have their city that they like to go to and they have their city that they try to build their brands in and Vegas is for the UFC. Other people have their cities and they'll try to shut you out, you know, and Hold it, ha on. it they, happens no, all no, the time. No, 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 they don't try. <laughs> No, they, they will do it, man. They will. They do Just, it. Do you think like do you think things like that though have some some benefits to help out this class action lawsuit? Uh, I, you know, no, not as far as you know where locations of fights are at and stuff like that. But I mean, because them at, like the people if, knowing like back back stories about how like they haven't been able to get into the U.S. or not into the U.S.C. but get their fight promotions to come to Vegas because they keep getting shut out. Eh, I don't think that's, mm. yeah, I think the real thing, you know, with, uh, that lawsuit is about fighters, fighters and their abilities to move on or do other things mm -hmm. that were not part of MMA. Yeah. And they were basically shut down from being able to do those things. And that's where you can look and say, you know, how much control over someone's, you know, livelihood and life do you have or should you have you know in these situations because if you're not giving them the fights that you know you're supposed to be giving them because you know when i say that the ufc always always offers the fights but sometimes those are fights that they that you want and they know you're not going to take it and it's to then prolong something and yeah, it's happening to Conor McGregor. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you take a look; it's happening. You know, I can I can name off the people, and you know Andre Arlovsky. You know he had that happen for the longest time, and he's been back with the promotion and doing great with the UFC forever. So, you know they both got over it, but you know they froze him out. Yeah, because he wanted to go, you know, see what he was worth and stuff. And it's when you want to go someplace else, and they want to kind of keep you. That's when things get a little bit ugly. Yeah, I feel like they're trying to set a precedent on what they on on trying to make an example out of some of these fighters, like like Nate. I would love to see Nate come back and fight Connor at the Sphere, but I mean, Dana's kind of said that that's not going to happen. I, I don't, I don't see it's going to happen. I think they want fighters to know if you want to run off and box, if you want to run off and do something else, then. You don't want to be part of us. You don't want to be part of us. And like, so yeah. like, you're not going to come back and sure we can make money off of you. Maybe one pay-per-view, but that's it. You're like, we're good. But like, they're going to make examples out of some of these fighters. Um, you know, I, I get to the point though, too, with um, a little bit with Francis. Francis came out today and said he wanted to do another boxing match. I mean, but John, <laughs> I guess the question is though now is how, if, if you go, Oh, and three in boxing, have you tarnished your brand to come back into MMA? Yeah. Are people going to yeah, now yeah. want to tune in to watch that pay-per-view that you're supposed to be on? Well, and see, and, and you don't, I, I can't sit here and say that I know what's going on between Francis and the PFL in any fashion, but you got to kind of look and say the PFL seems mm -hmm. to have been very friendly in allowing Francis to not only take the first boxing match, but then to take the second boxing match, you know, but that's, you know, that's on them that they, they know what, you know, they want, they know what they have an agreement for. And so, you know, as long as everyone's okay with it, Hey, that's their business. But I look at it and go, I think they've been just from what I'm seeing, very respectful to his desires to want to box for a while, but it seems like, Hey, they let you do it. You kind of owe them to mm -hmm. get back towards what they signed you for. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I was just wondering, like, if you go on and you take a third boxing match, do you then kind of hurt 
your marketability if you lose that one. Now, when you come back to PFL or to come back to MMA, how many people are going to tune in to watch? But it's the answer. What what happens if you win it? That's true. Because it's it's the same thing as you know we talked about if he was going to win against Anthony Joshua, is he going to come back to MMA? It doesn't make sense that he does. It really doesn't. No, I mean like you think about it, he made thirty million. Let's say he fights again, he'll make ten. Maybe you know because he didn't win because <laughs> he didn't yeah. win his last two, so now he'll make ten. But I don't know. I mean that's going to be more than what the PFL is going to pay him. And I know that they allowed him to go and do that. Uh, yeah. I think he'll still be involved with the PFL, but to what extent, I don't know. But I mean, I'm just wondering how, if you take a third fight, instead of just going in and getting a win, getting that that feeling back of winning before you take a third boxing match, like, do you go, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like you should. You should get in the, in the cage, get a win. Uh, and I'm not saying he's going to get an easy win either. Because, I mean, Hannah Fajeda has got some power, and you know, you're dealing with the first time you've ever been knocked out. Like, there's a lot going through your mind. You've lost two in a row. I mean, he hasn't lost two in a row in forever, if ever. Right. <laughs> so it's it's a, defi- it's a definite mind, a mind fuck. Uh, I know we got a little bit off track, guys. I know we were just rambling and rambling on this, but there was a lot of things Rambers. going through my mind today and when it came down to us just talking about all this and the fights, and we'll talk some more about it on the news. Um, so UFC fight night. Let's go uh, Marcin Tarbura versus Tai Tuavasa. And, um, I, I hate to say that we, we kind of were, you know, we're normally right, but you know, this time we were, we were, we were really right. It was, spot on. It was pretty spot on the guy, the guy, yeah. the guy that got on, if my Marcin Turber could get on top, if he get the takedown, he could have a successful night and on the That's feet, it. it was going to be tied to a Vasa. If he could keep the distance and, you know, and hit the big shots with the quick hands. It's exactly how it was planning out. That was exactly what, you know, we said, and we also said, well, we did say it's not going to last long. Well, watch it'll end up being five. Yeah, you know, it's a five round fight, but hopefully we're not jinxing it. But no, it went exactly like we thought. Ty came out; he looked good with his hands. Mm-hmm. He looked good in the dirty boxing. Mm-hmm. Look, he's a good brawler, you know. And, and there's nothing that's not being disrespectful to him in any fashion. He is a brawler, and he's good at brawling. He's got fast hands. Mm-hmm. He's he throws good elbows. He's not that technician when it comes to throwing kicks to all the different areas and how to, you know, you know, do that. He just blitzes at times. And when he blitzes, he's got, again, he's got strength, he's got speed and he does damage. He hurt, you know, Marcin with the, the elbow Mm -hmm. up top. And it was when we talk about dirty boxing inside, that was beautifully done. It was, you know, purpose purposeful in its intent, and it landed exactly where he wanted. It did the damage that it was supposed to do, and you looked and said, "Man, all he's got to do is continue on with this, and he's going to end up putting Tibera away." And Marcin was able to. He didn't even, you know, I, I like Bisping gave him all kinds of credit. Beautiful change of levels, you know, <laughs> you know. And I was like, "No, it was more like a damn tackle." Yeah. <laughs> 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 lean forward and just went into him because he was in trouble. He was getting hurt. Yeah. And, uh, but he was able to finally get his hands together. And when he did, he got tie up off, you know, the ground, put him on the mat. And from that point, it was two different levels of fighters going at it. You know, Tybura in the stand up is not of the level to be able to stay with Tuyavasa. And on the ground, Tuyavasa doesn't have the skill set to stay with Tybura. Tybura just took over, put him in bad positions, you know, hit him with good shots, a lot of shots, which is, I always like when I see fighters doing damage with shots, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of just working for the rear naked choke. And it's like, it's not easy to get, you know, it's not like people think, and you can open people up and get them to make mistakes by landing shots that do damage and hurt. They all of a sudden they'll start moving their head in positions that they shouldn't, and it's going to open up that rear naked choke. And he was able to, you know, get that. It was uh, locked on for a while, but eventually, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of put him to sleep. So, very nice win for Marcin Tiberi. Never lost in the apex. So, if you're talking about guys that want to stay with the apex, you're looking at one of those guys right there. Yeah. I mean, fighters are very superstitious, you know? Yes, they are. I mean, I never washed my hand wraps during camp. 
<laughs> it was oh, one of those that's things. Disgusting, dude. Never dude. wash my hand wraps. Or, oh, dude, they or, start to stink. Or my knee pads. Oh, <laughs> now you're talking Matt Lidlin category. Yeah, yeah. But, but as soon that's as it was over, gross. I, I would wash them. I'd wash them all the other times. Like if I wasn't in camp, I wouldn't wash. If I, if I wasn't in camp, I'd wash them pretty much every day. Take them home, wash them. Yeah, dude. Matt Matt Lidlin used to have oh, some of the nastiest, dude. and I was like. And I don't smell, you know, my nose has been crushed. I don't smell very good. Dude, it would burn my eyes. <laughs> oh, you could smell him when he was walking through the hallway. Oh, damn. Oh, Special. yeah. Special. Uh, Brian Battle and Aunt Lusa. What'd you think? I, I, I didn't understand what. Well, first off, listening to them talk about the eye poke, which was the commentary. And uh, it was not even so much the commentary. It was uh, the the play by play and he goes oh just he's got five minutes does do they have five minutes now for eye pokes it, up to i thought it was just growing shots was five minutes no here's the difference every foul mm-hmm. every foul other than a groin shot the f- referee and ringside physician in in you know conjunction with each other have up to five minutes to get the fight going again. Mm. Groin shots are the only foul where the fighter is in control of the five minutes. So the fighter, you know, you got, you got need in the nuts against uh, Nate Diaz. Okay. How much time did you take? Very little. Yeah. Okay. That's your choice, but you could have taken up to five minutes. It could have been that, you know what? You're standing there, and Mike Beltran comes up to you and says, Josh, are you ready? And you go, nope. Right? And then all of a sudden, you're doing push-ups. Right? Beltran comes over and says, hey, man, you, so you ready to go then? Nope. You're the one in control of the five mm. minutes. The referee cannot start that fight and get it going back again until you tell him, yeah, I'm ready. Okay? With the eye poke and every other foul... It's not so much that the fighter says they're ready. It's the doctor says they can continue. Mm. Once the doctor says they can continue, then the referee must start the fight. So and this is where you'll see sometimes the, the ringside physician goes, he's good to go. And he starts to walk out and the referee says, okay, you know, we're going to get this going. And the fighter goes, well, hold on, just give me a second. He goes, I don't have, I can't give you a second. Once he says that you're good to go, you got to tell me, you want me to stop the fight? I'll stop it, but you've got to go. Hmm. So does hmm. that make sense? What I what I was confused by was um, Brian Bottle got all upset afterwards. Yeah, like it was legit eye poke. Yeah, it was. So why are you? Well, upset? see, and this is, see, oh, and, okay, and this is the problem, Josh. You know, like I've seen, as you have seen, mm-hmm. how many eye pokes? I've seen ones that I go. Wow, that didn't look like much, and it did a lot of damage. It actually did damage, mm-hmm. and I've seen ones that you know looks like you know there's there's all the way to the second knuckle is in their eye yeah. socket, and the guy comes you know right you know, I'm okay. And you go how in the are you okay? I saw how deep yeah. that was, you know, and you'll get that. And so it it, it really is a question of does the nail cut the cornea does Mm. it scratch the cornea because if it does it's gonna burn you know bad it doesn't matter how many times you blink it stays and you keep on having to you know try to get your eye to, and it doesn't you know cure it it's not going to and it won't cure it for the day next day it'll start to get better you know but i've seen a lot of people with you know cut corneas i've seen people with sliced corneas that were bad that they had to have surgery you know, and so you you just don't know. But what happened with you know, look at Brian Battle, was looking beautiful in that fight. This kid can fight. No, he can't. You know, a lot of people they don't give him credit because of you know everything that happened. You know the way he won. You know the the Ultimate Fighter thing they brought in. You know it was supposed to be a what was it Deshaun Gore mm-hmm. was supposed to be the guy that was uh, in the finals, and it ended up being you know somebody else. And, Battle wins it, but no one's giving the guy credit for being a good goddamn fighter. He can fight. 
Why? Well, his kick, his kicks to the body were beautifully done. The teep kick to the body, he uses that like a jab and a range finder the entire time to keep you back. Everything he does, he does well. No, I agree. I, but I explained to you on the midweek show why I thought he doesn't get the respect he deserves. He just doesn't. He doesn't do anything that's great. There's nothing about him that stands out. Not his look. Not the way he fights. He fights a little unorthodox too. It looks like a little sloppy. Um, but I'm not saying, uh, and by no means, am I saying he's a, is he a bad fighter? I think he's a fantastic fighter. No, he's a good fighter. But um, and and he's gritty. He's someone that can take a shot. He'll keep coming. He'll deliver his own shots. He mixes it up very well, like you said, from the wrestling to the, the push kicks to the long striking to the clinch work. He does it all. He's good. He, and that's that's the thing, though, John, is that people sometimes get overlooked when they're not good at any one thing, but they're good at everything. You know, I mean, outside of GSP having the look, the physique and, you know, being from Canada and being kind of the very first big Canadian star, he had a whole country behind him. But if you yep. were to say, if I was to put George St. Pierre – in front of the camera now, I don't think he'd have the same same um, effect. Effect. I don't think he would yeah. get that because he didn't do anything that was great. He was fun. It was like watching him. I really enjoyed because he came up in an era that just wasn't um, that didn't have what he had. He wasn't a great wrestler when he first started. He didn't wrestle at all. He was all mainly yeah. striking, and you know, and uh, he had some good jujitsu. wasn't great, but it was getting better. He progressively got better throughout his career. But he wasn't a, he, he didn't talk trash. He was always super nice. I mean, like super outside respectful. of his physique, he didn't, like, you know, um, he, he was very shy, you know, kind of and just a really nice person. That's not marketability now these days. It's not the same. It's not the same person. And it's hard to market those guys. And um, Brian, go, go back, go back to what made him. What made him? The Superman punch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's I, not. I get it. Well, Think about it. He lost. He lost to Matt Hughes yep. at UFC 50. Mm -hmm. All right, and he he tapped out on an arm bar that was just getting extended with one okay. second left in the one round. One second left in the round. Okay, yeah. and it it wasn't. He wasn't beat by the arm bar. He was beat by the aura of Matt Hughes mm -hmm. and what it was up here to him. You you look at him in the in the. The stare down, you know, he's not looking at Matt. Look at, you know, just everything about it. Yeah. He had too much respect for him. And so what made George is right after that fight, and then Matt has another fight. I can't remember who he fights, but George <laughs> made this thing, gets into the octane, says, I was not impressed with your performance. Uh -huh. Right. And that's what started. Take a look. There he is looking up. I remember looking at him like, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. But you know, it's, and I was like, yeah, yeah, he's scared. Yeah. He doesn't want to be there, but, uh, you take a look and man, it was how he changed as a fighter, you know, based upon he, he started, you know, he got down on his knees, Dana, please, you know, uh -huh. all that stuff. You know, you know, I want my belt, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. But you know, everything that he did, you know, it was structured how he did it. He was he he is very smart and calculated on how he tried to market oh, yeah. himself, and he always stayed very professional. Yeah. He was, I guess, if I was to, if you were to take someone to make a role model out of in the sport, I would say it'd be him. Oh yeah, you know, no um, he's a class. He's look, he was a good guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, fantastic. But uh, to go back onto the Brian Battle thing, is that it just? he doesn't do anything that's extremely great. Like he's good at his standup. His standup is a little bit unorthodox, a little bit wild, kind of careless a little bit here and there, but he can put, he puts it together off of what he's doing. He throws a wild kick and if it lands great, if it doesn't land, he can actually close the distance, get into know. the clinch. I'm telling you, I tell you, he does a fantastic job of controlling range. Yeah. He, he controls distance and range very well. And once he starts flowing, look out. You got a problem. He's when he's got confidence in what he's doing, and he did against Angela. Look at, here, here's the the problem, and this is where I had all kinds of people, you know, typing me and asking questions about, you know, why isn't it mandatory that you know they they get the five they they use the whole five minutes and then decide whether. So it's like, so you want them to sit there and have a guy who's got a scratch cornea or a 
you know, a cut in his cornea that the doctor can see, and he's going to sit there and just, oh, I got to wait five minutes before I can start to help this guy. Are you dumb? Yeah. Like, you don't know when it comes to eye. I'm not saying that Lusa was not getting beat in that fight. He was getting beat, and he was, you know, he was getting touched up. And I thought Brian Battle was just doing a beautiful job throughout the first round, and he, it was just continuing on in the second when that happened. But you don't know. And, and people are going to sit there and say, you know, oh, he wanted out of the fight. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. I, you know, sometimes it's not your night. You know that. You know that feeling when, man, nothing is going right for you and everything seems to be like you're standing in mud, you know, and you just don't feel right. Maybe that was his way out. I'm not saying it was, but he said, I can't see. And as soon as you say, I can't see, fight's over. Yeah. No ringside physician is going to put his license on the line and send someone into a fight when they say, I can't see. Fight's over. So to you know, the, for the, for everyone sitting there to you know asking about, well, why you know, wh why don't they use the whole five minutes? It's, as soon as the guy says, I can't see, it's over. <laughs> I don't care if it's at 459 or at 9. Okay? That's the way it's going to be. What's the verbiage you can give to fighters to say? Oh, anytime that I had someone poked in the eye, I would say, hey, take your time. I want you to take that time to clear out your eye. Don't, don't tell me if you can see right now. It's what we can do later. Okay? And just... I'm going to give you time. Yeah. So, and, and I, most of the time I would wait to bring in the ringside physician because give the fighter time to calm himself down a little bit. Okay. Now they even use where they actually give them a wet towel. Yeah. Which is great. You know, that sometimes that really does help, you know, before you couldn't do it, but a lot of times they're using the wet towel now and stuff, but it's all a matter of, you know, I used to say, you know, <laughs> I would sit there and, you know, talk with the fighter, and they once they they would start to say, you know, I say, are you are you seeing clear now? Yeah, I said, you know, am I ugly? Right? And then they would go, they would go, no, and I go, then you can't see clearly, so we're gonna spend some more time here. You know, and you just use and kind of use humor sometimes to mm -hmm. you know push things and get their mind to where they're comfortable with. Hey, I've gotten enough time. I feel good. I'm ready to go. Because the, the, I have had fighters, no doubt in my mind that have gotten out of fights because they knew they were losing. And it was like, I can get out of here without losing, mm -hmm. getting a loss on my record. And I've had fighters where not a doubt in my mind, they could not see <laughs> when they said I can see. Yeah. Right. And I'm looking at them and say, Hey, it ain't worth it. You know, I can see John. All right. You know, and put them back out there, and you know, and afterwards they go, Yeah, I couldn't see a I fucking couldn't see thing. A thing yeah. <laughs> but that's hey, it's all in the mindset. Too. It is. It is. Yeah, the, the uh third round with the Tony fight, man. I couldn't see a fucking thing. There was so much blood in my eyes. I couldn't see yeah. anything. It was like a red halo, like just around my eyes, and all I could see was just red. It was like a red blur and halo. I could see the lights. It was so bright, but it was like red halo around his body, and it was yeah. just a big blur. I was just hoping to touch him so I could try to find a way to get in. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, I mean, and do you recall, I mean, it was pretty recent. What was the kid? Prado was uh, fighting uh, uh, Zell Huber mm -hmm. in Mexico. And his, his coach, you know, he, he, by the end of the second round, his eye was just a mess, you know, bleeding. So he's got blood in his eye, yeah. swelling shut. And his coach is saying, you don't need your eyes. You don't need your eyes. You get close and touch him, right? And I'm thinking, wow. no, you do need your eyes. Yeah, you but, do. But but you will hear, you know, guys will talk about, as long as I can grab a hold, and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But once you're at distance, you're not. It's yeah. trouble. So. Oh, man, that's nasty. Yeah, that went right there. <clears throat> nice nice, nice pull up, Dave. <laughs> so. All right, now Ovid St. Pru making his return to the cage. God damn it. Josh, he looked really good. Yeah. Until he got tired in the third, <laughs> he was exhausted. Uh, I, I was like, hang in there, baby. Yeah. Hang in there. He looks so tired. Yeah. Oh, dude. Just like, just trying to, uh, oh, dude, his hands tired. couldn't get him. Dude, he was throwing body shots that had about, they wouldn't break no. a bubble. No. They <laughs> a have. bubble would have been caught between them. It didn't break. 
I mean, he was just exhausted, but you know, he fought it. That was a, that was a hard fight to judge as far as I thought Kennedy did a lot of good things. You know, Ovense proved a lot of good things. And here we go with people are going to say, Oh no, you know, it was a rob- not a robbery no. at all. You know, it was whichever way you went, I could, I can give you. Yeah. That's, that's a, that was a uh, justified decision. And it was nice to see, even though I feel bad for Kennedy, it was nice to see OSP get a win uh, there and feel comfortable and actually look really good compared to how we seen him a couple of times. You know, he had good head movement. He was actually slipping punches. Mm-hmm. He was doing good things with his f- footwork and stuff like that. So, you know, I thought it was a, uh, you know, and every, you know, I thought it was a good fight. It was a little bit slow in places, um, sure. you know, but then that's kind of to be expected. Like OSP's got power. I mean, I didn't, they were reading off some stats. They were saying that he's he's got the most finishes in the two hundred five pound division, the light heavyweight yeah. division. I was like, really? Yeah. That's interesting. I would I would have never have thought. Would have never have thought. Uh, but man, he he was he, when he was younger, he was fun to watch because he seemed like he kind of lulled you to sleep, and then all of a sudden he'd explode. Always did. Yeah, absolutely. He seemed so lethargic out there. He always seemed like he didn't give a damn. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, hey, I'm out here. Yeah. yeah. My check. Eventually, I'm going to do something. Yeah. But I'll just stand here for a while. And all of a sudden, whap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think Kennedy re- regrets in that fight? He just get dis- he just didn't get started soon enough? Yep. I think that he yeah. he he gave too much respect in the beginning where he was, he was not being offensive enough. Mm-hmm. And he let the first round go. Yeah. He just let it go. You know, okay, so now, that's great. But now you got to come back and win the next two. And... You know, uh, I'm not too sure he won the second one. And, you know, I think he won the third because, like I said, OSP was exhausted. But, you know, it was a, uh, it was one of those fights where they both had their moments, but, you know, OSP had the more power. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, Christian Rodriguez and Isaac Dugarian. Boy, great fight. Man, it was, and I've I heard so much crap from people about you know this fight, and you know, oh, it was a rip off. No, it was not. Jesus Christ! Stop with the rip off stuff, man. It's driving me crazy. I, I mean, Dolgarian came out; he was on fire because I had nothing but respect for Christian Rodriguez off of watching him multiple times now in the UFC. Mm-hmm. He's good. The guy can fight yeah. everywhere. He can fight on the ground. He can fight in the stand up. Tough as hell. He's very calm. Doesn't, you know, doesn't get excited in any areas and stuff like that. And Dolgarian was putting it on him with his wrestling. He just could not get free. But eventually, all that wrestling, Dolgarian's arms blew up. And you could see that he was trying to throw punches. And yeah. it was he was pushing them. Man. Limp noodles. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just you know, out there with limp oh, noodles. That's, that's not good. <laughs> and, and Rodriguez came back in that. I thought it was a great fight. I really, you know. I don't. I don't care who won. I thought it was just a great fight between the both of them. Yeah, the only thing that kind of concerned me a little bit was the the judging, the the scoring on it was ten eight for first round, I believe, for Dolgarian, and then ten eight. Someone gave ten eight for Dolgarian in the first round, and ten eight for Christian in the other one, right? In the uh, yeah, in the third, in the third, yeah, in the third, yeah. I didn't yeah. feel either one of those were ten eight rounds. Oh yeah, there was. You thought so? You got to look and say, well. Because here's what you're looking at, you know, it's, it'll talk. We, we, we try to go with damage Mm -hmm. is the biggest thing, you know, and, and how much damage there was, but there was so much domination. That's true. Of positioning with punches being thrown. Now, not, it was more volume than damaging, but there was a time, you know, you could go and look and say, Dolgarian was landing some good shots as, as Rodriguez was giving up, I'm going to get hit to get out of this mm-hmm. position. And he did. He got hit. And so, you know, Dolgarian, you look and you go, across the board, he got a 10-8 on that first, and I thought he deserved it. And across the board on the third, I thought that Rodriguez deserved it. Okay. I thought it was the right score. And everything comes down to how you, you know, went with the second round, which was, it was actually super close. Mm-hmm. Dolgarian came out and was winning it, and doing well until all of a sudden, here comes Christian, and he's taking over. And does he do enough in your mind to take that round away from Dolgarian, or does he not? You know, I think uh, 
one one gave it to Dolgarian and two gave it to uh, Rodriguez. Yeah. And so super close. No, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with the fact that it was super close. And and I don't and I'm not gonna say by all means it was definitely not a robbery. I thought it was a very close fight. And either way it goes, yeah. it goes. Um I didn't see the first round being a 10 8. I didn't see the third round being a 10 8. But I would even regardless, it would have ended up the same way, John. Even if I gave both of them 10 nines, the decision probably would have still been the same because it would all came down to how you get you scored the second round. Yeah. So 10 8, 10 10 10 9 doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No. So, but uh, but I got to be honest, it was a damn good fight. It was fun to watch. Great fight. Fun to watch. Man, but you talk about heart on both guys. Yeah. Both guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, a fun fight. All right, Macy Chasson versus Penny Kinzad. Domination. Domination. <laughs> oh, look domination. at that, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. Well, that's just domination right there. Yeah. It just took her, took her down and just mauled her. Beautifully done. I mean, there's not much really to talk about. Nicely executed, right to the back, right to the choke. And that's how it's supposed to go. Like, that's what yeah. you train for. You get, you're in the gym every single day, so you get up performances like that. She did everything right. Great job. Yeah. Yep. I, like Gerald it's, it's, it's hard to say too much because it's exactly how when well, you draw it up on the board, right? That's how you yeah, want it to go. Exactly. And it. I'm like, well, yeah. it all worked hey, out. This is our game plan. Yeah. Look at she's, you know, Pani is good in the stand up. That's where she wants to be. We want to take her down because that's where we have a big yeah. advantage. She did it. She did exactly what she was supposed to do. You know, mm-hmm. so that very, very well done. I don't know what more we can say on it. Gerald Murchard against Brian Barber. This went exactly like we said yeah. too. <laughs> Like at Brian Barberina in the stand-up man, he's fun to watch. He's he'll just battle and brawl. And Mershart, you're always a little bit like hesitant about his stand-up. And it's like, was he gonna get hurt? And I don't know. I don't know if that's all comes from you know seeing him a couple of times when he's he got knocked out fast by Kamzat. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a fast one. He's had a couple of knockouts, but he, he actually does okay in the stand-up, you know. No, but he's you, not bad. You know. You know he's looking for the takedown. Yeah, and he does a you know he does a good job of getting it at you know critical times for him and stuff. And Barbarino was unable to stop him multiple times. And in the end, like, I was surprised that he kind of went out because it looked like you know yeah. his face was getting that jaw. Yeah, you you know you know what that was like. That sucks. Uh, yeah, I do know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frank Shamrock used to do that a lot. And um, Habib was real good at it too, but Frank was the guy that he did it on purpose. Um, <clears throat> but just, like I thought, I wouldn't have thought he could have been choked out by that. Not yeah. like that's more of like a pain position, you know. If the jaw hurts, the jaw's pushing back. I, I can't, I can't imagine how it must have just pinched at the right spot and was able to cut off, forcing, yeah, just forcing his jaw down towards yeah, his. He was, uh... I, I didn't expect him to be out when he started lifting the hand to see if it was alive. Yeah. I was like, uh, 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 <clears throat> what? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Overall though. Um, look, Brian Barber and all he's got to do is there's a lot he's got to do, but in this fight, not aim for the head so much that made the oh, takedown so much easier. Aim for like right around the chest level, maybe even start ripping the body. Go to the body. Yeah. Because it's not like Mercer going to go out there and really try to knock you out. Like he's going to try to hit you, but his hits are going to be more to close the distance, to get to the clinch, to try to bring you in closer to him. He's trying to touch you and touch you so he can grab you and bring you to the ground. Barbarina just kept lunging in, leaving himself out of position, head hunting, and just made the takedowns a lot easier. Got to the yeah. top, got to the top, got to the back, got the finish. I mean, just nicely done. Good job. Merchard's good, man. He's a good fighter. He is. Doesn't get he's a lot of love. Doesn't get a lot no. of love, but he's. But his well, I think what this uh, this ties him with Anderson Silva in the middleweight division for the most finishes. Oh wow! Yeah, out of any fighter, so that's saying something. It is. It really is. I, I look at it though too. Like he actually physically looked a lot better in this fight. I don't know. Maybe it's because he had shorter hair. I, I don't know. Maybe it's. I don't know. I I agree with you. Since he, he went down look, to, he's at Kill Cliff now. Yeah, and. He seems to just be like, I don't know, maybe it's the sunshine. It's the difference between Florida and being up in Milwaukee. I don't know, but yeah, the, the suntan will Milwaukee. do it. But he, he does. He, he just looks a little bit better. He looks like physically he looked better. Like, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it, he just, when he walked in there, I'm like, he looks like he's leaned out. He looks like he's put on some muscle. 
he yeah. he looked like he's filling into his body properly. Like I don't I don't know how old he is, but I'm saying like he's he physically looked a lot better. Uh, Mike Davis versus uh, Nathan Levy. Mike Davis is a stud. Yeah, dominant. Mike Davis can fight. Mike, Mike Davis is strong as hell. Mike Davis is someone people are going to have to look out for. The, he it, when he's on a roll, man, and he grabs a hold of someone, look out. He, you're not getting away from him. He is good. He's got great positioning. He lands hammers as far as you know the shots when he's throwing them. I, I I have a lot of respect for Nate and Levy as a fighter, and man, he just for the most part he had a couple moments in the mm. fight where you okay, okay, but for the most part it was like, man, Mike Davis is just putting it on him. Yep. <clears throat> I you would have thought that Nate and Levy would have had like a little bit more of the advantage on the ground. That wasn't the case. You would have thought on the nope. feet he was gonna be able to do a little bit of something. A little Got bit longer. Dropped. Nope. Yeah. Nothing. Mike Davis was better than him on the feet. And was and dominated the top position too when he hit the ground. Just was a dominant performance. Oh yeah, realistically. So the I, mean, be- I got it's probably the best performance I've ever seen him, which tells me he's getting better. Mm-hmm. So look out. Um, what are the fights on here you want to talk about? Obviously, there's one in here I wanted to mention with yeah, you, we, but we got to talk about it. Uh, the Philo fight though with Philo, he looks fantastic. He looks dominant. He looks controlling. It was a great fight. Great top position against Ode Osborne. Just a great, great job. He he won that fight yeah. from beginning to end. The Danny Silva versus Coolabout fight, fantastic fight. Danny Silva looks so damn good. Just a great fight, man. That whole yeah. fight. He, he looked fantastic in the first round. Then he started kind of uh Coolabout sort of finding his stride. Yep. Started doing really well in this in the second. Third Coolabout round. doesn't look he doesn't look like no. that much. Some no. bitch can fight. No. Yeah. No, very true. I mean, like he, he's got long, he's got a snapping jab, really good yeah. with his kicks. He, he moves mixes the, every yeah, he mixes he mo- his footwork's good. He moves it's well. All fluid. In and out, yeah. But, but Danny Silva looked about... like a, a a good fighter. Danny yeah. Silva looked oh. like he, head movement, boom, 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 good hands. Yeah. Kind of started getting a little out. bit tired. You know, got started getting tired, started getting pieced up a little bit, but John, obviously, this is probably the one that you want to talk about was the <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> Jackie and Corey McKenna, um, yeah. the armbar stoppage, not stoppage, stoppage, maybe not. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust my ball, my my boy's balls here. Okay. Uh, you know, he, uh, Mike Beltran, look, he's a great ref, but uh-huh. in this scenario, in this situation, and the only reason why I'm really gonna call him out right now on this is because. He took a picture with Max Crosby, the guy who plays for the Raiders, and I'm a Chiefs fan, so I like to rub it in that we've been spanking him <laughs> for the last couple of years. So but you know, Beltran is a Raider, huge, diehard Raider yes. fan for life. Yep. So yep. I've been I, able to make fun of him for years. I've told him, if you want to come on over, buddy, come over to the winning side. Come on over. Yeah. It'll be all right. We got at least 10 more years of whooping your guys' ass. Ooh, Ooh man. Can't wait. Can't wait. Maybe, maybe, maybe like four more Super Bowls, hopefully somewhere and in And Antonio, there. man, is head coach now, they yeah, I like no, him. he's he's good, man. I like him, yeah. Antonio Pierce. Yeah. I was I was rooting Fires for him. him up. I was rooting for him to get the job yeah. full time. What's your take on it? Look, here's the truth. This is what I, I'll tell you. I, I've talked to Mike, you know, and uh, he made a mistake. And, and, and it, unfortunately, it's how he made the mistake is because Mike doesn't want anybody to get hurt. Hmm. You know, he sees. Jackie put an arm bar on Corey and he sees Corey bring her hand and she's going to tap. She brings her hand out and brings it, but she doesn't. And he starts to go in like, let me get you out of this. And then goes, stop, go, 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 go. (laughs) And you go, oh shit. And you know, look at nobody, nobody was more happy or excited that Jackie won that fight than Mike Beltran because he doesn't want to, you know, have a call like that. He doesn't want to interfere with their fight. He was so intent on keeping Corey unhurt and safe from the arm bar that he made a mistake. And I told him, I said, look, you know, in these situations, Mike, you have got to realize, you know, they, these are professional fighters no matter that they're a 115 pound female, doesn't matter. 115 pound female, 
deserves everything, you know, as far as chances in the fight. I know you want to protect him. I know you want to take care of him. I know you don't want to see him get hurt. You've got to let them go. When she taps, you stop it. But if she doesn't, if you've got to stand, if you got to stand there and watch her arm get dislocated, then that's what you're going to do. And once you see it's dislocated, now you can go in and stop it and we'll take her in the back and the doctors will pop it back in. And But you can't keep her from being injured. That's why you made the mistake. And, you know, he understands it and he's not going to make that mistake again. And look, there's no referee, none, you know, that doesn't make mistakes that uh, we look at and go, okay, this is how it happened. This is why it happened. I'm not going to do that again. Okay. And that's, that is what it is. But I, I was, I was glad that Jackie, well, she, you know, cause she did let go. Mm-hmm. She did let go for half a second and grabbed it right back again. And then, you know, you take a look at how she manipulated that arm and looked at you. She's looking at that thumb and turns that thumb over and you go, yep. And that's why you were a world champion. She's good. Yeah. She's really good. She's really good. Um, <clears throat> I, I thought I thought it was I thought he made a mistake. He knows he made a mistake. Yeah. The right person, oh, yeah, right person won the fight. So ultimately that's the best part of this whole thing. Um there's I, there's just not much to say. Like I it, you've got to let the fight go until the person actually taps. Yeah. I mean, you know how many times people would have stopped Chael Sonnen's fights? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's, we could talk about those. You know what I mean? Because like, Chael many times says, I didn't tap. No, yeah. you screamed out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like a little schoolgirl. And so, Chael. yeah, that's what happens. We stop the fight. Chael's oh, famous dude. for that. I love him. <laughs> He's, so He's never funny. lost a round. Never, never. Never. You know? Oh, man. I and mean, if he did lose, the, if he did, if you tap during a round, Josh, I didn't know this about the sport either, but Chael taught me this. Mm-hmm. If you tap during the round, you just lose that round. You go right back to fighting for the next round. Absolutely. That's how we get this thing done. <laughs> uh, good performances, though, by a lot of the fighters on this card. And, uh, you know, it actually ended up being a little bit better card than I thought it would be. No, it was actually entertaining. Yeah. You know, it was a, uh, you looked at a lot of the fights and, you know, you can, you know, when, uh, it's always the same coming off of a big pay-per-view. And 299 was a big pay-per-view. And it's going to be the same thing coming off of 300. It's going to even be you just don't have any big name value really on the card, but the people that were on that, they really performed. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, Hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. Go to uh, onlyfans.com slash Wayne in onlyfans.com slash Wayne in onlyfans.com slash Wayne in right behind me and uh, subscribe to us over there. It is free. I did two lives last week because I forgot that when we film, it doesn't drop actually till the next morning. And so I said, I'll do it tomorrow. So when people were listening to it, it was the next day. Next day. So I went, I, which what's funny is I actually did the 8, 8 p.m. one, uh, Central Time, and it was a lot busier. It was a lot busier versus trying to do it at 2 o'clock in the middle of the day. Um, but it was uh, 8 p.m. Central was, was a good time for a lot of people. And um, I was probably a good hour in. And I was like, all right, guys, we've done an hour. Got to got, got some time in. It was good. But it was it was good. You know, we had a good group of people and they just kept, you know, revolving questions through and we had a good time, man. We were laughing and joking and uh, it was good. Had a good time. So uh, I'm going to do another one uh, coming up. We're going to probably aim for Tuesday. So after Tuesday or Wednesday and uh, get these knocked out for you guys. And um, yeah, go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in. Subscribe to us over there. It is free and uh, live chats. Get in more connected with us. Ask us about anything. It doesn't have to be about fights, guys. It can be about anything. About my dogs, about you know, about life, whatever, uh, you know, ask me about anything. doesn't have to be about fights. So what else you got for us, Dave? All right. Let's hop into this uh, first fight change that we have for um, fight night in April 6th. Chris Curtis steps in after Marvin Vittori gets injured against Brendan Allen mm-hmm. in a rematch. I'm surprised they didn't give Brendan Allen someone a little bit more higher ranked or availability. Uh, but you never know. Someone who is higher ranked it's not gonna be like yeah i want to take this fight in two weeks yeah but chris curtis got a win over him already yeah i get what you're saying i understand yeah. but i mean like look i've obviously excelled my career a little bit further than chris curtis has at this moment and i would like to keep keep it moving i don't want to go backwards to fight someone i've yeah. already lost to yeah 
So, I mean, I get it. I understand why they did it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's it's almost, you know, that, you know, if you're Brendan Allen, you kind of look at it and you go, hmm, Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera. I want to get mine back. Mm. Okay. I, I can understand why he took it. This is one of those things, though, John, where I look at it and go, Chris Curtis is in Las Vegas. Yeah. This is at the Apex. Yep. What we're just talking advantage, about. Baby. We're just talking about it. It's like, okay, look. You know, where's Brent, Brennan Allen's where? Where's he trained? Florida. Florida. So Chris Curtis Kill is, Cliff. he's at Kill Cliff too, right? Yeah. But Chris, like, we're going to be in Vegas. Like, we don't have to worry about flying him in. He could probably stay at his own house, yeah. you know, until like the night of the fight if he wants a hotel, whatever. Like this, these are the benefits of doing the events in Las Vegas. That's right. Interesting. But I think overall, it's good. I think this should be a good fight. I think that Brendan Allen has gotten so much better since their first fight. So much I agree better. With you. I think it was what twenty, like almost twenty twenty one. So somewhere to, around there, yeah. two and a half to three years since that fight. But uh, Brendan Allen has really stepped it up and is really in a flow right now, mm-hmm. both with his ground game, which is really outstanding, and his stand up has just looked really good. So. Yeah, TKO punches and knees. Yep, look at that. December fourth of twenty twenty one. So three years. Yeah, two and a half years. Excuse well, we're gonna see which one's gotten better since then, and if the styles still uh, makes a difference. Should be a good yeah. fight, though. Should be fun. Uh, main event, correct? Yeah, yeah. Main event. <clears throat> good for them. On a fight night, yeah. On a fight night. All right, what else? What other fights you got? Fight announced. Oh. Yep. I know. We were just talking about Jonathan Martinez the other day yeah, going, hey, we who were, are they going to have him fight? Who are they going to have him fight, man? You know, he's good, but, you know, there's no one there, you know, right now that you're going to look at and go, ah, that's the fight. Yeah, yes, there is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's coming back. Yeah, you know, everything that yes. I've heard, though, is the reason why he's back is because they don't have anyone right now that can bring the star power to Brazil. Brazil? They needed they needed to bring him back, so I don't know what they're paying him, but well, you know, I mean, this is this is a, this is a good fight for him though. If to come back on, this is a good fight for him. I'm not too sure about. You're that. not sure about that? It's at bantamweight, one thirty five. I think. Um, if, if here's the difference, Jonathan Martinez does exactly what Jose Aldo used to do. He attacks the legs. Mm-hmm. He's got beautiful kicks. He beats him up. He slows you down and picks you apart with his hands. Jose Aldo used to do that just beautifully. He doesn't do that anymore. Mm. At least he he didn't when he was, you know, fighting MMA. He went to boxing for a little bit, but he became very boxing centric even in MMA. And a lot of you know the question was, hey, did he hurt his, mm-hmm. you know, shins to the point where it hurts him to land those kicks now where, you know, he really got away from it. Cuz I mean, Josh, think about some of the fights. <sighs> that Aldo had and the leg damage. Remember Uriah oh, Faber yeah. in WEC? I mean, it was nasty. His photos of his leg went viral for a while there. Oh, yeah. Know? I mean, just incredible. And he did that to multiple people throughout his career in the WEC and then into the UFC. And he completely in the last, you know, four years of his MMA career, at least completely got away from it. Yeah. That style just went away, and it was, you know, obviously there's a reason. You don't you don't just go away from something that made you so successful because oh, I just get tired of it. No, he, he's he has some type of injury that prevents him, you know. And there's Luke Rockhold, didn't he? He he had that cut on his shin, yeah, that it hurt him every time, you know, and it would break back open. He couldn't get it to heal. You had, I know, the ankle mm-hmm. where it hurt you. You know, you, oh, put the steel rod in your leg. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's going to make it feel better. Yeah. No, no, it actually makes it feel way worse. No, I understand the, I'm actually kind of thinking it's something a little bit more severe than just the shins. I think it's probably something to do with the hips. Might be. Um, I, I've had so many friends that were like world-class Muay Thai guys, and now they're all having hip surgeries. Yeah. Just the kneeing, the kicking, and like, you know, they're some of the coaches, they thought it was funny. Like you show up, the first thing you do on the pads is okay, ten head kicks on the right, ten head kicks on the right. Like I'm not even warmed up yet. Like let me get let me get moving, you know. And um, yeah, I, but it's also the extension, and this is what people don't get when you're kicking and you're kicking a lot in practice on heavy bags or pads, and you get that extension where you really bring it around. 
look, there's a lot of torque on that socket when it lands. You know, the body weight is coming forward with such force that, man, it, it's it's just, how long before it wears out? Yeah. And that's what happened. I had um I had Bobby Lashley over the house today, and we were chatting for a bit, and I was just laughing about it because I was watching uh, Alabama and Oklahoma Sooners gym, women's gymnastics today. It was on TV. My daughter's getting into gymnastics, so she's like, I want to see, I want to see. So we're watching. And they did this little stat where they were talking about off of the um, – off the pole vault thing or not pole vault the uh what is it called not pole vault um <laughs> the vault vault the vault off the vault how they land these girls are maybe 100 pounds soaking wet oh yeah but they're landing with 18 times their body weight onto their their feet their knees and all this and all the practicing like you're talking about all the practicing landing their hips their knees their ankles all of these things and Bobby was over and he's like, yeah, he's telling me about, it. he's got this match that he's going to, you know, he's planning he's gonna jump off of this and onto the table and all through this table. And this, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, I just saw earlier, these girls that are a hundred pounds, they're landing with 18 times their body weight. And you are jumping off of this thing onto somebody else through a table. I'm like, bro, really? <laughs> like, it's yeah. gotta be at least 20, 30 times your body weight landed on somebody else. It's insane. Well, but in this scenario, same thing, like all the years of kicking, all the years of knee, that's all into that hip, that hip joint, man. And I can see, I can see it maybe doing something like that where he just, cause at the, remember his last fight, he started doing the leg kicks later in the fight and it started kind of taking over the fight, but it was a little yeah. bit too late. It was a uh, too little, too late at the end of that. But, um, but if he can, if he can start utilizing his kicks, getting back to them at all, maybe he just needed time away. I don't know. We'll see when he comes out, how he fights, but Jonathan Martinez, will he be able to stand being late kick? That's the other thing. Guys that normally do things. They're not the ones normally get kicked to the gym. The guys that are really good at, you know, at doing certain things, they're not, they're not taking the damage because people are afraid that if I kick him, he's going to kick me back and I don't want to be kicked. You know, or, oh, if I throw this, if I throw this body shot, ah, oh, like it'll get him to stop throwing his. No, it actually makes me want to throw it more. And so is that, can Jonathan Martinez handle Jose Aldo's leg kicks if Jose Aldo brings him back? That's a question. We're going to find out. This is, is a question. big, this is a big fight for Jonathan Martinez. Huge, Huge fight. Huge. Huge. But when you take a look at it, it makes sense. Is this the main event? No, it's the UFC 301. I think the title fight's the main event. This one right here. Oh, Pathogen and Ursig. Okay. Yeah. I also heard that if what's his name gets out of um, the Jamal 300, that he wants to be on that card. Uh, Alex Pahea. That he's he's <laughs> already he. I guess apparently that was part of his contract negotiation. If he gets the win and he comes out healthy, that he's allowed to fight on that card. Like, really? That's yeah. That was part of, I guess, apparently his agreement to fight on 300. Hmm. So, well, we'll see. But this fight right here, Pantoja versus Steve Ersig, not not who you would have thought they would have had him match up against. No, not at all. But I'll tell you what, just watching Ersig in his last fight, some bitch can fight. Yeah. He's got good stand-up. He takes a shot. He delivers beautiful combinations. He's good everywhere. I don't know if he's good enough on the ground to withstand everything that Pantoja can do down there as far as keeping him from being able to get back to his feet. But I, I this is one of those ones I feel like you when I say I'd really like to see Ursic have another fight before he, yeah. he takes this. But, you know, it is what it is. And there comes that chance and you get an opportunity. You got to take it. Yeah. We'll see if he can uh, get the most of it. Yeah, you can't really say no. When they say, hey, we're going to no. give you a title shot in Brazil. Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, nah, let me think about it. <laughs> like, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you've got to take the fight. And uh, I do agree with you. Um, he, I think he needs one, maybe two more. Yeah, you would like to see him get up into fighting mm -hmm. someone at least at number five or six. Yeah. Some, you know, to get that you know level. I just don't, I don't see him right now. He's at 10. Because his last fight was Matt Schnell, right? Mm. And well, who's the, who did he just fight? Last fight? He just fought like a couple days ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Same thing. So, a couple days ago, two weeks ago. <laughs> Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the second. 
I mean, he's he's good, man. He's really good. He is good. He's he's, he's a talented fighter, but I th- it's just one of those you look and you mm-hmm. go, man. You know, having him fight someone like a Kai Kara France, you know, doesn't yeah. have to be a great ground fight or anything, but someone in the stand up is going to push him. That would be the you know, give him Albazi if you want to give him a, a great grappler to. How are none of these guys available though? How are none of the top ten guys? It's crazy when you think about yeah. it, isn't it? Where's Manel Cape? What is he doing? I don't know. This is your shot. I don't know. You would think. What about Mokaev? He just yeah, he's com- did, just coming off of a win. Just coming off of the yeah, but it was yeah very recent. I get it. I get it. It was it was the same night as Steve Ursig, wasn't it? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kai Car France. I haven't seen him in a while. Is he, no, he had been hurt. Yeah, so. he got injured. Correct. What about Albazi? Albazi's fighting here pretty soon, isn't he? Albazi got hurt. He had that. He had that fight, the pe- and then he had to pull out. That's right. Okay. I'm trying to get all these guys with, together, uh, man. Um, he had the fight with Moreno. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> I'll pass. Oh man. I mean, I think I think the Ursig, We're gonna find out exactly how good he is. We're gonna find out. Yep. I, I really enjoy watching him fight. I'd like to see a couple more fights, but you know what? When they call to hey, you want a title shot? The last, you know, the, the last thing that goes through my mind. Yes, I do. Yeah, the last thing that goes through my mind is, ah, fuck it, let's just see what happens. <laughs> right? Like, let's just see what happens. Uh, Dave, what else you got for us, buddy? All right, here, I've got this uh, video you sent me earlier, Josh, but um, do you need to sign for it before I press play? Before I bring it up? Do I need to sign for it? Do you need to sound? Oh, uh, what sound? Do you need the sound from the clip? Oh, no, I don't think so. Okay, okay. John, right, you can playing. do it. We're playing a little video here for you guys, but this is uh, a fight that I had saw the other day. Did you see this, John? Oh, oh. No, no, look. Oh. Uh, <sighs> you didn't see that? I don't know if we can play that on YouTube, but. I did not see it. I mean, he blew Oh, oh yeah, you oh. saw it pop. It's a femur fracture. Good. Yep. Uh, dis- what do they call it? Distal, uh, dis- distal or whatever it is. Femur fracture. That uh, looks, his, look his at leg he, just he's, just, he's like saying my leg, my leg. I would have just been screaming like a little bitch. <laughs> I swear <laughs> that looks uh, so damn nasty. The, the guy I'm, I'm it's honestly, just his legs get, gets caught as yeah. he's coming down. Little side note. The guy didn't, he, the guy didn't even know how to react. He didn't celebrate. He didn't even know. He's like, what the what, hell just What do you happened? mean? He's, He's appalled. He's like sickened by what yeah. happened. Oh, yeah. it snaps like a broomstick, man. Just, oh, yeah. oh, and it's sticking the bones like sticking. Oh, John. Oh. oh, dude. I had, I had one, one time and it wasn't, a, it was a, a lower leg, but the compound fractured as he stepped back and the bones sticking up through it. Oh, oh man. That's nasty. Disgusting. I feel so bad for the person. There was a guy, you know, remember John Claude Louis, John, John Claude Van Damme. No, no, John, his name is Jean Claude Louis. Like he was a kickboxer out of AK, heavyweight guy, fought in K1. Anyways, he had a guy that kicked him, and he checked it and did the whole step back, and his foot was flopping all around. And uh, but just nasty, man, nasty. Ugh. I we we hadn't seen a lot of those. Remember, then it was what it was Anderson Silva first. No, Corey Hill. Yeah, Corey Corey Hill had the the one, and then Anderson against. Uh... Weidman did it with uh, Weidman, and then Weidman, Weidman did it with freaking. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, it's a yeah. revolving door. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder what is the what's what's causing these. I think a little bit more now in MMA. We never saw them before. No, no, it's it's pretty simple. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think it was TKO. Remember the there was a. Uh, it was, it's called UCC for a while. It was up in Canada. Yeah. I and then do. it was called TKO. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's where George St. Pierre came up. Yep. You know? And uh, I was doing uh, fights up there. And I was actually uh, broadcasting with Mauro Ranallo. And we had uh, Jose Pele Landy Johns against Brian Gassaway. Hmm. And Jose throws a kick. And Brian, and it's usually what you'll see is, the fighter starts to check, but they check a little bit late, just a little bit late. So they don't get their, their leg up and up. But what happens is as the kick comes, it hits the knee 
straight with the femur. Mm. And if you kick hard enough, you snap your own leg based upon it's, there's no give. Because mm. when you kick, there's always a give that, you know, the motion of the, the kick goes in a certain way and the, the power dissipates. But it's always, when it goes straight with the femur on the knee, you know, I've seen them, I've probably seen 15 to 20. Gee leg breaks and it's just nasty when it happens and it's always then it's then it's the question of when they step back what occurs because that's when it gets really bad you know, it's like ah man yeah. makes me want to throw up in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> disgusting not so what well, look at it, man i'll tell you what if there's it's always funny because you know people are like, how do you watch it? i said no that, that, that doesn't that this doesn't bother it always bothers me when someone hurts themselves you know, yeah. with something like that, you know, and then he makes it even worse. It's like, cause you just like, oh man, you don't want to see that. that's horrible. Yeah. When Weidman did it, you know, I'm trying to do what was, um, damn, I can't think of his name. Uh, Uriah he Hall? was the next Anderson Silva. Uriah, yeah, Hall. Uriah Hall. Yeah. Yep. When he did it, it was just like, oh man. Especially you know, at he, that age. I know. Yeah, you know, he had a lot of there was a lot of complications with that. You know? People don't realize, man, this is that's a nasty. And then they injury. get the whole thing. Oh, but you get a steel bar. It's like, yeah, that doesn't work. No, no, no. They can dig my body up when I'm gone. They just there. All you're gonna find is a steel bar. No thanks, man. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Dave, you got anything else for us, buddy? Uh, no, nope, that's gonna wrap us there. Right, that's man. gonna wrap us for tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this show. Go to onlyfans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. It is free, and I will be doing a live this week. So make sure you guys subscribe to us over there. Jump on the live chat and uh, let's have some have some conversations, man. And uh, go to conversations, Wayne, conversations, back and forth, a lot of back and forth. Uh, go to wayneandmerch.com. The weather is changing. It's no longer going to be hoodie season anytime soon. It's, it's always spring. it's always hoodie season. It's yeah, always hoodie spring. season. But uh, we got some short sleeves up there. And uh, you guys, thank you guys so much for subscribing to our channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the little bell, thumbs, notifications, all that stuff for when our shows drop. We've got a bunch of different types of content that drops throughout the week. And uh, so make sure you guys hit that bell, the notifications, so you guys know when it drops. So you guys can get the fresh uploads right away. John, take us away, buddy. Hey, for everyone out there, hope you enjoyed the show. Mark Hammer Coleman, I hope you get well soon, son, and we will see you.